Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video 7 in our SOLIDWORKS API Project Tracker series. And we've already taken a look at how to access all the different properties within our SOLIDWORKS file. We've been able to check custom properties, we've been able to add custom properties, we've also been able to get the file path name. So right now we're starting to work on our user form. And the layout and the setup of this is very important, we need to make sure that it's very easy for the user to understand. And we've already started by making these text boxes that are project number and project name. We're populating from the custom properties in our file. Now we're going to have to create a bunch of user forms. We're going to have to interact with the user and allow them to do things such as make the new custom property for project number and project name or make those individually and so on. But for right now we're dealing with the main user form, the one that the user is going to interact with assuming that they have a file that already has these custom properties and they don't need to add any additional information. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the overall layout of this is as easy to understand as possible. So instead of using a label, I want to come back and I want to use the frame just like we use for active document properties. But the frame is now going to be used for things like the project number and project name. So we have this text box for project number and now we have frame two. Now what I want to do is change this to project number. So now we have this frame that we can use for our project number. Let's move things around a little bit, make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Now we can drag this text box and drop it within this window. So this makes things a little bit easier to see, a little bit easier to understand. Now if we run this form, if we simply play it, you can see that now it looks a little bit different than it originally did. So we need to make sure that everything that we're doing here is very easy for the user to understand. Again, we need to be real careful with the widths of all these boxes and you're going to have to manually enter values. For instance, the width will make this 100. Our text box, the width is currently 84. And you can see that its height is 18, left is 6. So we're going to go ahead and make this 86 and take a look at this by playing our form. So it looks a little bit better, it's a little bit more centered on our form, very easy to understand. We can also go back and change the alignment of the text box. So right now it's aligned to the left, if we want it centered or right aligned we could do that as well. That will change the position of things when we display it on the screen. Now we want to do the same thing for our project name. I'm going to simply take this frame, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it. So now I have the exact same frame, the same properties, the same frame, and I want to come in and I want to delete that text box. So I'm going to come into my project number, the second frame, and I'm going to change this to project name. Now I can take my text box and drag it and drop it inside here. Now remember we did modify some of these properties our original text box is 86 so we want to go back in and we want to modify this make sure that we follow the same sort of functionality the same sort of sizing now we can move the frames around and we can organize this in a little bit better manner we can control select both of these we can right click we can align their tops and that makes things look a little bit more uniform so as we play this back we now have project number and project name a little bit easier for the user to understand once we enter the file name, we can go ahead and resize the overall structure here. So for right now, I'm going to make this frame a little bit bigger, and we want to add one more frame. This frame is going to be the same width as the two project name and project number frames, but this new frame is going to be our file location. Now inside here, we're going to have to create a new text box. So for right now, I'm just going to drag a text box and I want to rename it. It's going to be txbx file name. And again, these names are very important when we're looking for these properties when we're programming things in the background. Now, the reason I made the text box so big is because a lot of times, especially when you're dealing with network locations or even multiple buried folders, you're going to have a very long file name. So we want to make sure that it can wrap around. And there is an option down in the properties for your text box. We have this line called multi-line. Now we need to change this to true. If we leave that at false, it's simply going to obscure some of the text. If it's long enough, it's just going to keep wrapping out here into space. If we turn the multi-line to true, it'll then wrap around and show you the file location in this entire box. 
So now let's take a quick look at the file. And now we need to populate this with the file name that we're dealing with. So we want to go into our user form and view the code. Now, as we're viewing the code for this private sub user form initialize, we're getting the file path. And we have this file path, this string that we declared called file path. And it's automatically set to get path name. Now, if for some reason there is no file path name, we set file path equal to no file path. So this means we can still use this value. So what I want to do now is txbx file name dot value is equal to file path. We'll go ahead and save this, go back to our user form, and let's play this and initialize it. So now you can see that it's populating here. Now everything is currently bold. If we want to change that, we can select all three of these, or we can select them individually and change their properties individually. Under the text style, we want to change it to regular instead of bold. Might be a little bit easier, a little bit less distracting for the user when they're looking at these, and also it'll take up a little less space. So now if we reinitialize our form, everything is regular in terms of the font, it's not bold, and you can see that everything is wrapping as it should. Now, If you think you need more space, and this is definitely the time that you want to handle that. So now as we're looking at things, we want to resize and make sure that everything looks uniform, everything looks the same. Our file location box is currently 216 wide. Now if we take a look at these two, these are each 100 wide and they're spaced apart some distance in the middle. So we want to make sure that these values are working together, so everything's working together. We don't necessarily have to have that 216 wide. We can make it 200 wide and we can select these two, right click, and we can align their rights. And as you can see, it changes it. There's a very small gap between project number and project name, but if we play this back, you can see that that could be okay. That could be fine for us. If we want to change those values, we can go back in and we can reorganize things. And let's say that we want the width to be 210. Then we can select this guy, align it, align the rights, spend some time. So select these two, align the lefts, select these two, and align the rights. Now things are spaced out, we need to make sure that our text box inside of here is the appropriate size. Let's go ahead and resize this, and the height is currently 36. Let's make it 34 and take a look at what we have. It needs to be just a little bit wider, so instead of 192, we can do 194, and then let's play our form and take a look at it. All right, so now everything looks pretty good here. We just need to resize the overall active document properties. So we want to resize this window so that it has the same spacing on the left and the right side. Then we want to resize the overall user form to make sure that follows the same. And again, one more time, play it back. Everything looks pretty good so far. Now we can also control whether or not the project name is centered, left or right justified, or whatever the case might be. In this case, what I actually want to do is go into the project number, and I'm going to make that right justified. And the project name, I'm going to keep left justified. So that way they keep a little bit closer together on the screen. It makes things a little bit easier to see. All right, we'll go ahead and save this. And now we need to take care of some other things we need our form to do. We need the user to be able to enter a note. So we want to use another frame and we want to make a section that allows the user to interact with it and add a note. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply say note, but we also want to change the style. We're going to make this bold 10 point font and we're going to change the border style to the style single. So that way everything matches. Now if we look at the first one, we actually change it to be a special effect bump. So very important that we keep everything the same. We go back to this one, change the special effect to bump, and that way when we look at it, everything looks the same. We follow the same sort of visual style. You can see here that it's actually a little bit smaller, so we have to go into the properties and modify these values. This one is 
236 wide. This one is currently 234 wide. So we'll just go ahead and resize that to 236. And now we have a good section to place a text box for our note. So we want to go ahead and insert a text box. And we want to make sure that it's sized appropriately. Uh, and again, this is something very important for you to do. Then you want to rename that text box. I'm going to use TXBX note. Now we have an area that we can insert a note. Now if we play this form, the user can simply type in this area and they can start adding a note. But you'll notice that it's currently bold. Well, we want to make sure that we keep everything the same and we want to make sure that we modify the parameters to make sure that the text is regular. Now we've added the note, we simply need to add a few more buttons. But I'm going to go ahead and leave the button section to the next video because we're going to have to handle a few special things, dealing with what the buttons do, dealing with changing the colors on the form and so on. So it's going to be a little bit more involved. But now we've taken a look at what it takes to add a few things, add the file location, the project number, project name, text boxes, and also the process of resizing, organizing, aligning things so that visually everything looks nice and even and centered and organized. It's very important that your forms look good. Otherwise, if, if things are a little bit off, if the text is bold in one and, and not bold in the other or whatever, it's going to look messy. It's going to be hard for the user to focus on what they need to do. You want to make sure you draw attention to certain areas and you leave other areas without so much focus on them. If you guys have any questions on what we covered here, please email us at solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.